okay for schools to teach our children about math, science, history, and numerous other subjects, yet they get high and mighty with righteous indignation when biology is taken a step further to focus on sex. <laughs> there are a few things more annoying than listening to ignorant, whiny parents complain about a school district teaching their children about sex, which is the reason why schools don't offer sexual education courses in their schools. Sexual education should be Sexual education should be taught in school to prevent pregnancy, for students to be informed, and the fact that safe sex and abstinence must be dealt with in an educational, comfortable setting. It's a simple, common fact. Birth control and age-appropriate safe sex education go a long way in preventing unplanned teen pregnancies. Teen pregnancies can only be reduced through medical, excuse me, medically accurate, age-appropriate sex education in our schools and access birth control. In 2006, according to CNN, there were 52,000 un unintended pregnancies in South Carolina between 15 and 44, between ages 15 and 14. When a sample of media consumed by 12 to 14 year olds found 11% of content to be sexually active. New York requires sexual education courses as of 2012, and teens who receive a comprehensive sex education are 50% less likely to have an unintended pregnancy than those who receive sex education that are abstinence only or contracept contraception only programs. But another problem is the fact that parents don't really know how to te teach this course, brushing it under the rug. Okay, how many of your parents <laughs> gave you the talk? Um, how many of your parents brush it out without, oh, they'll figure it out some other way? <laughs> okay. Healthy families are in those which parents and children talk openly and honestly about important life issues, including sex. Unfortunately, there are many children in different situations who never receive adequate or accurate reproductive health information at home, such as some of you guys and me, myself too. So... Who do you talk to if your parents don't tell you and if your school isn't teaching it? You talk to your friends, which isn't which really isn't smart because y'all go to the same school. So um, other family members? Your dog? <laughs> young people <laughs> Young people who have the facts are better equipped to make responsible decisions about their own sexual behavior. We want to give every teen and every young adult this option, but some states don't even offer the class or sex program out of fear. Because of this, those who don't or aren't informed, according to a nonprofit organization named Tell Them, states that in SC alone, South Carolina alone, 60% of teens lose their virginity and continue to have sex by their senior year in high school. Research shows that if you educate young people about sexuality, including abstinence and contraception, they are more likely to delay sex. Just let that sink in. But we just can't blame it on the parents. It's also the school system's fault for not teaching it in an educational way when they do teach it for the students to understand and comprehend. Although some school systems do teach sexual education courses, they really don't teach it age appropriate for the students. Sex, sexual health education is an important part of a young person's curriculum if it is taught in the uncensored, med, medically accurate, age-appropriate manner. A school in Texas taught elementary school students a sexual education course showing them pictures of vaginas and penises literally scarring them for life. Instead of, and it wasn't like the cartoon, it was like the, the real thing. <laughs> Instead of the hopeful outcome for this course, it was the complete opposite. According to CNN, regarding appropriate sexual courses for different age groups, elementary school students should at least be telling, be learning about bras in some way, and in some way about puberty. On average, girls start puberty between, between ages of 9 and 14, according to TellThemSC.org. But some will start to develop breasts or pubic hair by age 8, and a small number will start to mature by age 7. Crazy when you think about it, but it happens. Then in the middle school years, they should start learning about the sexual parts of the body, introducing them to the technical terms. Then in high school, their freshman year, they learn the rest. I can remember watching 
the miracle of life in that freshman year, and like it literally scarred me for life. But it did anybody watch the miracle of life? Yeah. Some people had to watch it. Some people have never seen it before. Some people watched it in um, college, like in a biology course, like one on one. But I watched it my freshman year in high school, and it literally scarred me for life because they show the baby coming out. <laughs> So it can scar you forever, but it does help. And then I just want to show you some statistics for SC according to tell them SC.org. For six out of ten women, family clinic family planning clinics are the only source of health care. Ninety-nine percent of sexually active American women have used form of birth control during their lives. South Carolina received over three million dollars in federal funds for abstinence only until marriage programs in two thousand and eight to help stop the, the, um, the high rate of unplanned pregnancies. Youth ages 15 to 24 account for almost half of STI cases in South Carolina. <coughs> Excuse me. South Carolina is considered one of our nation's top HIV hotspots, which is sad. And then three out of 10 young women in SD will become pregnant by the age of 20. And then some um, statistics as well, some more statistics. Um, less than 50% of people, I mean, of males age 15 to 19 know how to say no to sex, which is, it's kind of good, but it's kind of bad at the same time. <laughs> Grades, when teenagers 15 to 19 first receive formal sex education about topic of sex, um, basically students are supposed to learn about like the core of sex, in middle school years. That's when like you're reaching that puberty challenge. And the caption says no condoms in schools, no sex education, abstinence only, and the pregnant girl says I'm strictly a problem. So let's recap. Schools need to incorporate sexual education in their syllabus somehow. If they don't, the graduation, if they don't, in the end it prevents teen pregnancy for students to be for students to be informed in the fact that sex and abstinence must be dealt with in a comfortable manner. Would you rather your child end up like this, or this, or this? Or would you rather your child be happy, excited, or end up like this? <laughs> <laughs>